The internet is a digital world and uh, we look at it from like smartphones or also computers. We look at that digital world, but we also interact by using the keyboard, using the mouse. But we are outside it. That digital world is behind that screen. Now the metaverse, in the metaverse, we go really into a digital world. We use um, a VR glass like this, put it on our head, and then the virtual uh, world is around us and we are really inside that world. We can move and do things with it. So this is the big difference between the internet today and the metaverse which is coming now. I have a virtual headset for more than a year now. And uh, one of my favorite apps is boxing. So when the weather is not too good, like raining, and I want to have a workout and I'm really, I don't like fitness at all. So I put that headset and then I'm in a virtual ring. There's a you know, fierce looking opponent. And then I have to really you know, guard myself, otherwise get head knocked out right away. I have to move, I have to run around a bit. That's why you, know, you need some space. I had to you know, move, always move the furniture away in the living room. And then after two to three rounds, I'm really finished. I'm sweating and I had a great workout. So this is one of my favorite apps. Then um, there are, um, I don't use it that often, I have to admit, but there are socialization apps. So you have an avatar and your avatar moves in a room. You can meet people, talk to them and so on. And you can watch uh, like movies with them. You can really do socialization stuff, which as I said, I don't do that much. Um, there are also some business apps. Um, for instance, there are VR meeting app. So you are your headset and then you sit and then you, you have some avatar sit around the table, right? And then, you know, you can really work together, you know, in the board, you can write things on the board. They also add things. You can see each other mimics, how people move. You really feel much more interactive than just having a Zoom, just seeing the, the video. You really can really interact with it. And this is like already, it's just the beginning, obviously. Then um, games, obviously, this is everyone knows. Um, you know, you have like shooter games, you have uh, archery, you have climbing, you can do all the games more or less in virtual reality and you have a more immersive feeling. Uh, but very interestingly, you also have some creation possibilities. For instance, there is a VR pottery. So with your hands, hand tracking, you really do your own pottery and then you can digitally save your creation. And you can do similar stuff also with paintings, digital paintings. And I think this is the way it's going. You will digitally, personally create stuff and also digitally save them. This is where we are going. So these are some of the examples of early metaverse apps. The reason that this metaverse thing becomes such hype just recently, uh, there are a couple of reasons, but one, of, one reason is Facebook. Facebook's own Oculus. I mean, Oculus was one of the pioneers of virtual reality headsets. And uh, Facebook bought, heavily invested in them. And finally, the headset that I have, it's called Quest, Quest 1 and Quest 2. They are standalone headsets, so that you don't need a cable to a PC. And it really works. I mean, you really feel as if you are in a virtual reality. So first time, I mean, we have been working on this 30, 50 years, but first time we have a headset that really works and works without huge hassle. So that's one thing. And secondly, that headset company is owned by Facebook and Facebook is actually putting all the money in it, especially now that their social network is a bit, you know, feeling old and not that successful anymore. Now to also make the company more exciting, they really hype this. And this is the reason. So basically first time it's possible and the biggest, one of the biggest uh, stakeholders is putting all their weight on it. And they even changed the company name from Facebook to Meta to show that they're really betting heavily on the metaverse. So this is the reason why it's today, just now, so much hyped. I mean, uh, metaverse, blockchain, crypto, NFTs, I mean, you use all these words often together. But uh, to make it simple, normally actually you don't really need any of these for a metaverse. I mean, today is with all what we have today, just like the internet, we could operate metaverse as well, using multiple currencies and, and so on. So you don't really need any of these. But, especially the blockchain technology, which powers all the others, crypto and NFTs, can be quite useful for a global virtual world. Maybe open a parenthesis, what is blockchain at all? I mean, I'm not going into the technical details, but basically it's a public record. Public record is important because 
uh, normally the records, you know, if you buy a house, then you will have, you know, in your country, an authority can only verify that you really own it. Money, only your bank can really verify that you own that bank money, right? And it's also very local and generally just one institution. It's not very transparent at all. I mean, your bank could just decide that your money doesn't exist, right? You would not be able to prove it. So blockchain is a global public record. So basically, you know, everyone can in and you can really prove that you own something, some digital good. That digital good can be money, but now it can also be a digital creation like the NFTs. So that's why blockchain technology, uh, because it's such a public record, independent from an institution or independent from a country, can be really useful for a global virtual economy. Basically, today the metaverse, as I said, already exists. You can use the Oculus headset, go in, and then you have the apps, and you can start living in the metaverse. However, the experience today is not that great. So basically, you have a headset, as I said, this headset is quite heavy. It has a battery life of just two hours, and really heavy. Put it in your head, and it's not very comfortable. And, you know, you cannot, if you want to work with it, eight hours will be tough. So that's one thing not that comfortable. Secondly, yes, you go in and you are really impressed. It's a virtual world. I can recommend it everyone to do it this month. However, that virtual world is not that nice. So it is really, really, it looks much worse than the real world. I mean, imagine those old computer games, right? They were not looking that good, but it was interesting. Something like this, this, you know, computer game 20 years ago, so you go into that virtual world, but that look, world really doesn't look nice, not like the computer games of today. So these two things obviously need to be changed before this becomes much more widespread. So headsets need to be much lighter, much easier, you know, ideally just some uh, lenses, right? And secondly, um, the picture with the graphical quality needs to be much, much better. So it should look as almost like the real world. Then, of course, the adoption will increase dramatically. And maybe a more minor point, also the you know, physical trackings. Today, you, know, you still use things like these controllers for, because the hand tracking is not that great. But obviously, they are working on it or the first application. In the future, we should not need any kind of such stuff. You know, with just some hand gestures, it should be possible. So this is what we need to have before Metaverse can completely replace the current, much more primitive kind of internet. I mean, make no mistake, Metaverse is the future and it will certainly replace what we have today. Uh, because you see, once, as I said, the headsets are lighter, the graphics are much better, the experience is much, much more superior to what we do today. I mean, basically, we are just looking at some screens. I mean, it's quite clear that once we, you know, really be in this immersive kind of world, we, we will never want to go back. And I can imagine just in, you know, one generation later, the young, youngster will look at us, you know, like dinosaurs who likes to look at, you know, these 2D screens. Just, you know, young people already now cannot understand how old people still watch television. You know, television that you cannot even, you know, decide when to watch when, completely, you know, where you are passive. This is similar stuff. I mean, the internet at one point will be seamlessly completely replaced by the metaverse because no one will want to have this kind of rather primitive experience that we are currently enjoying. But this is technology, it always becomes better and more realistic. 